Hi, and welcome to your next video in Computer Science for Everyone. This time, as per the previous presentation, we're going to talk about printing text to the screen. I'm still here with the previous class that we created in the last programming exercise, and I just wanted to take a second to talk about what the yellow lines mean that are underneath our variables, because I didn't mention this in the last video. So if we go to the error, it says the value of the local variable is not used. And then it gives us the, the name of the variable. And it's just that. This is not an error. It's just telling us, hey, you've created this variable, but you're not actually using it. So it's kind of pointless. Um, but it's not an error. And obviously, since this class is just um, as a demonstration, uh, I'm not too worried about creating variables that I'm not using. So let's start with printing text to the screen. First of all, I am going to go to the default package of my introduction project where the class I'm currently editing is and then I'm going to create a new class I'm going to call this printing the package is a default package and the super class and everything you don't have to worry about remember I said you would have to worry about whether you want a public static void main method and I also mentioned that per project you would only have one main method. This was actually not strictly true. Every class that can potentially start the program will have a main method. In this case, we're creating this class so I can demo to you how to print text to the screen. And because this class is going to hold all the functionality to print text to the screen, I am going to want to start the program from it so I can actually run the program that prints text. This is why we have a public static void main. Similarly, we had a main method in our intro class, although it wasn't really necessary because we never ran the program in it. So the main method is simply where the program starts running. If you create two different classes that can provide two starting points for your program, you will want two different main methods, one in each class. But let's not worry about that for now. I just wanted to mention this in passing. So we create our printing class, and now I will remove all these comments. And there we have the main method of our program. So as we saw in the presentation, we want to tell the system to go to the default output and print a line in it. So the first thing we have to do is go to the system. And then the full stop will give us everything that's inside the system. So as we can see, out is one of them and it's a print stream and then we get a yellow box that says the standard quote-unquote output stream the stream is already open and ready to accept output data excellent so we go to the default output and then another period or full stop will give us what we can do inside the out print stream which is the default output and in here we have a lot of things we can do but one of them is print a len so we go to the println that will take a string and here we write what we want to print. And there we have it. We have a println method which accepts a string and this string is what we're going to print. So if we save and then run this, we see in our console down here the words hello world, which is what we wanted. So, what else can we print? Can we print a number? Well, it seems like it. So there's a number, and notice how the number has appeared on the next line. This is really interesting, a really interesting functionality. And we can skip this piece of functionality by removing the ln from the end of this line is obviously a new line that we create if we don't ask the computer to print a new line sorry it will just print the characters that we give it and then not create a new line after it so in this case hello world and then five appear in the same line so i'm not sure you remember in the table where i explained the data types there was one that was a character data type and one of the examples, or maybe the only example that I gave in code, was a character that was backslash n. And I said, 
This character, although it's backslash n, is only one character and it is used to create new lines. So instead of print ln, we can just use print, and at the end of our string, we can add this new line character backslash n, and this will indeed create a new line at the end of our string. So our string is now not only hello world, it is also the new line up to and before the 5 that is printed in this line of code. I just wanted to mention this in case you were wondering what the backslash n character actually did. But of course we can remove this and say ln, ln. Now notice how I have another line here beneath the 5, which I didn't have before. If you don't believe me, notice how there's no new line below the 5. So the ln is actually just doing the same that we've did with print and backslash n. So can we print text and numbers? Well, we can. I mean, we can do hello world 5 because 5 is no longer a number. It is now part of the string. And this is definitely something we can do. But what if I wanted to print hello world and then a number? No. And then maybe like the addition of two numbers. Well, we can do this. Uh, let, let me show you what I mean. So now we have 5 plus 5. And this equals 10. And this is printed at the end of our string. And the way we've joined this string and this addition together is with a plus sign. This plus sign is not addition in this case. It is what we call concatenation. It joins together this 5 and 5 and this string that we've put in here. And this is extremely important in programming to be able to concatenate numbers together. Imagine you had a program that calculates the interest in one of your bank accounts you would want to say percentage interest is this amount. And you'd want to concatenate the amount of interest and the text that says how much interest you've got together in one string, like so. For example, in this case, we would see the 5 in there. Notice how I've concatenated this string, amount of interest, with a 5, and then the percent sign as another string. And this plus sign is at both sides of the 5, so it gets concatenated with both strings. Okay, so what else can we do? We can create a method such as we did in the first programming video. And in it, we can print a string inside the method hello. We have our two curly braces. And in it, we print hello. I am in method hello. The method is called hello. And we print that. And then we can instead of having to write hello, I'm in method hello, we can simply execute this method by putting its name. We put its name and then a semicolon and we execute whatever the method has inside it. In this case, hello, I'm in method hello. And this is used because in case we wanted to print this twice, we can do that by simply rewriting hello and not having to retype all of this text. Okay, so we've seen how to create um, methods that will do things, how to concatenate strings and numbers with the plus sign, and most importantly, how to print text to the screen to the default output. So let's go into the next video and keep learning more about Java programming together.